I'm Scott. This is Gavin. And I'm Craig. Welcome to Majors Mess Hall, episode 74. With me, as always, is Gavin. Yo. Craig. Yep. And myself, Scott. We got a great guest on with us today, so uh, looking forward to it. And that guest is? Uh, Charlie Hester. She is a uh, a singing comedian. Is that what we would call it? Well, she's a, she's a stand-up comedian, but she does music as well, like as part of the stand-up. I would say. And uh, I've, I've got the chance to see her uh, a couple years ago. She opened up for Sam Lasko at the uh, Joker's Club in Indianapolis. Thought she was really funny. Talked to her about coming on the podcast then. Forgot all about it. But lucky we uh, we got her now. She's uh, she's getting bigger, guys. Yeah, we had, uh, we had uh, I've obviously never seen her live because I'm not there. But um, just the chat we had, so funny. She gave us this jingle, which we'll we'll play later on in this episode. And uh, just she's just hilarious and really nice, down to earth. So uh, yeah, we got we got that coming up. But before we got that coming up, we're gonna do. Uh, people seem to enjoy. We did our little um, what would you do segment, which went down really well. People seem to find that very funny. So we're gonna do that again. And uh, we're also gonna talk about. Our t- we're gonna do another top three, and to try and keep it in with the theme of the show, we're gonna do our top three comedians. So. We can jump into that now, I think. I'll go first, and then Scott, you can go, and then Craig, you can go last. Sounds so good. I'm going to say my number three of my top three stand-up comedians of all time, I'm going to say is probably Jerry Seinfeld. Um, and I've never seen him live, unfortunately, although he is coming to uh, the east coast of Canada. And me and my wife are talking about going, but we don't know if we're going to be able to, but I'm hoping to, but... Anyway, I just think he's fantastic. I obviously seen the show Seinfeld growing up, loved it. One of my favourite all all time sitcoms. But at the start of every episode, especially I think it was like between the seasons one to five, maybe uh, each episode started with a little piece of his stand up. So that was how I seen him do stand up basically. And he'd just tell like one or two little bits. And uh, I always found him funny. He's not crude. He doesn't swear. He keeps politics out of his stand up. Um, which you know, that's I'm not saying that that's that that's a must for for comedians. You know, I do find some some sort of uh, satire funny, but uh, Jerry doesn't do that. He keeps it all out, and uh, yeah, I just think he's a really funny, funny fella, and I, I really do hope one day I get to see him live. So I'd say he's my number three. Number two, this is so tough, but I'm going to say because this used to be my number one, but number two I'd say is Billy Connolly. I don't know if you've heard of him, Scott. Yeah, I heard of him. He's uh he's uh, up there in age, but he used to be the teacher for head of the class. What's that? It's a TV show that was over here for uh, a couple years. Yeah, Scottish yeah, he used to be Scottish like, fella. He, yeah, he used to be like the teacher, and he was a uh, quick witted and pretty funny. He is fucking hilarious. Like his his stand up's amazing. Like he's got <laughs> he's just got like this. All he has to do is shout. Like, if you just go, ah, one of those fucking noises that he makes, it just makes me laugh. But his stories are so funny, and uh, I did get to see him live two years ago. He's, as Scott said, he's getting up there in age now. He's um, He's got Parkinson's disease, and I'm going to get this wrong, but he had, I'm pretty sure he had prostate cancer as well. And uh, he just jokes about it. He just gets up and tells jokes about prostate cancer, and... It, I mean, it's all it's all tongue in cheek, and it's it's very well done, and it's he's just a funny, funny man, and uh, even though he's getting up there in age, and he's 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 a lot more frail now than he used to be, and he's not bouncing around like he used to, he's still got it, like he's still got the humour, he's still a fantastic comedian, and a lot of comedians look up to Billy Connolly as like you know a bit of an idol, so he's one of the greats definitely. So he's no, he's my number two, number one. I reckon Scott already knows what my number one is. I'm gonna say he's Ricky Gervais. I've seen Ricky three times in stand-up, and each time I've seen him, he's been hilarious. Um, he's mo- probably one of the more controversial stand-ups just because of some of his jokes and like he- he'll joke about like 
you know, leukemia and stuff like that. And it's again, it's all it's all like tongue in cheek and stuff. And Ricky's my idol in general, anyway. Even like with the podcast, like Ricky was like my inspiration for starting, like for for getting into podcasting because I love Ricky's podcast so much. But just the stand up is great, and and I urge anyone if you ever get the chance to go and see him, go and see Ricky because uh, you, you'll you'll just you'll split your sides laughing. The guy is hilarious. Uh, all his stand up the, uh, the specials he's done, they're all on DVD. Um, I'm trying to remember the names of the ones I seen now, but the last one I seen was Science. Um, he's since done another one. Since then, I can't even remember the name of it now. But anyway, it's on Netflix. So Humanity, it's called. So check it out. Go to Netflix and search Ricky Gervais Humanity. Funniest comedian, in my opinion. Definitely my favourite. You know, when I brought this up with you, I, I thought, well, this is going to be easy. But when you think about it, it really wasn't. No, it's not. It's not easy at all. Because there's a difference between, uh, you know, a comedic actor and a stand-up comedian. Not every comedic actor does stand-up. So it, it is tough to... Because we can all pick, you know, like three Jim Carreys. But, like, to actually go, actually, you know what, stand-up-wise, which is so much different... It is tough. It, it is. So my top three, I, I thought about it. You know, I, I I got a new comedian. He uh, he snuck in on number three because I really, he, every time I see him on TV, he makes me laugh. He, uh, he plays Squirrely Dan on Letterkenny. He's a K. Trevor Wilson. He's like a large comedian, but, you know, I thought he was funny on the TV show, so I looked more into him and been watching his stand up on YouTube and always a good laugh. Nice, yeah, I never I never heard of him. Has he got any like stand up like on Netflix or anything? No, he's got some CDs out. Okay. And and uh like I said he does like a lot of comedy festivals up there in uh in Ontario. And uh yeah, absolutely funny guy. And like I say, he's kind of a big guy. You know, big burly guy, and uh, yeah, he talks about some funny stuff. So, my number two, you, you you might criticize this one. Go on. I'm going. I'm going way back. I'm. I'm I gotta go with Bob Hope. Okay. You know, and he he, he did a lot for the military. He did. A, he was a good ambassador. You know, born in London and then came over to the states and lived to be a hundred. And uh, every time I see him in movies and on stage, well, not personally on stage, but I always laugh. Even the jokes are old and dated, but the the, the slapstick humor makes me laugh. And number cool. one, I share with you, man, Ricky Gervais. He, it's podcast. You know, you can listen to it over and over and over, and you hear something different each time. You know, and his stand-up's funny, humanity. It does make you cringe a little bit at some of the things he talks about. But when you think about it, it's it's funny. Uh, I like his TV shows, Derek, and all the other stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's my number one pick. You've got to go and see him, man. If you get a chance, honestly, go and see him live. Because uh, watching the DVD is one thing, but the atmosphere within the arena or the stadium or wherever he is is so much more enjoyable than watching it on tv and see i had a chance to see him last year when he was recording the humanity tour in chicago but it was a wednesday and a thursday because he did two nights at the take chicago a fucking theater. day off I, see i i don't do that man God. i feel too guilty why do you I feel fucking off, guilty mate I, this is what we live for i call off like one day a year man why it's just fucking way, teacher's man. pet the last time I caught off is when I picked you guys up from the airport. Just to, like seriously, we, like jokes aside, right? What's the point in life if you can't enjoy yourself? You would fucking lo- I know you would. You would love to see him live. If you get the opportunity, fuck work, man. Seriously, no. they, like I, I know, like I know you got a good boss, and and that's great because he's a great guy, and my boss is a great guy as well. But fuck work. If you need to take a day off, fucking enjoy yourself. And I enjoy myself on the weekend, so. Like, if no, that, he ever comes in on... Yeah, no, that's good. But, like, sometimes, for instance, that, like, he wasn't doing a weekend. He was only doing a week. Like, I get that you, you there's only a small crew of people, but that's not your problem. You don't get paid as much as the boss. The boss gets paid a lot of money to deal with that shit. So, 
like you, you just got to enjoy yourself that's my that's what i that's how i look at life at the end of the day my boss gets paid way more than me so if i need to take a day off and he's got a headache he's trying to find someone else to fill the slot so fucking be it man you're entitled to time off just put it in ahead of time you'll have to find someone I get what you mean, though. You know, some people are like that, like, but maybe maybe it's because you and your boss are quite close in that way. Whereas, like, I like my boss and he likes me, but we're not friends. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I, it, it's just one of those things. He makes more than me, so that's one of the things of his job. I don't make as much, so it's not my headache. Right, I agree, I agree. And then Craig, he doesn't give a fuck at all. He, he just, he'll just take a time off. He'll just take time off and tell him he's taking time off. Took a, and I took a few days off when I when I move out. So why? Because it's during the week. Oh, you mean yeah? But to move, you mean to move in? It, to move in, yeah. Do that in a day, though, can't you? It, it'll be all day, so I won't be able to make work. Yeah. So how many days have you took off? Uh, <laughs> on the safe side. Three. On the safe side, you, you'll get it done in a day. Yeah. He wants to break it in, man. See what I mean, Scott? Three days to move. <laughs> I'd understand if you were loading up a whole house to move into another house. I wouldn't. Sit that you can do it in a day. I mean, like if I move all my shit out of here, you know, that would be a yeah. That would be a day, to, you know, just to move everything up, pack it up. You'd have it done but in a day, with help. Yeah, with help, Craig. How much help you got? It was mainly Anne and the uh, two removal guys. So not just you and Leanne then. You could have asked people for help. Well, maybe Dave, but we'll see what happens. Three days off to be safe. I mean, you could just buy your friends a beer and. To help move and, but anyways, we're moving off the rail here. Yeah, okay, Craig, top three, mate. Well, I don't have one. What do you mean? You know, I said to you, do a top three. I don't like comedians. Oh, I have a top one. But that's it. What? Oh, so, uh, I just <sighs> thought. <laughs> I thought, fuck it, I'll just come up with some like make me own stupid top three. What do you chocolate want about bars? Oh, for Choc- f- chocolate bars. Yeah, mate, you were meant to do stand up. What are you doing? <laughs> I can tell you, my top one. Who's your top one? <laughs> my top one. Well, his name's Lee Evans. Uh, he doesn't really do anything anymore. He, he like retired a few years ago. But uh, every time I watch him, I, I still laugh and. Uh, you know, I don't know if you've heard of him, Scott, but he's, he's mainly like a British stand-up. But yeah, I started in movies, uh, a movie called Mouse Hunt. Uh, anyone yeah, know that film? Yeah, it was shit. Next. <laughs> and he's also started with a, a movie with Jackie Chan as well. He was also in Something About Mary. Oh, uh, yeah. Little shitty rom-coms. <laughs> the Fifth Element. Oh, uh, yeah. And that as well. So he's your top one, is he? Yeah, that must, like anyone else. That must have been hard, deciding who was going to get top one, whether it was going to be Lee Evans or <laughs> Lee Evans or Lee Evans. Jesus Christ. I feel sorry for Lee Evans and Lee Evans that came second and third. <laughs> Glad you did your homework, Craig. That's it, mate, I said top three comedians, you come up with one, and then what was all that drivel about chocolate bars? <laughs> I was doing to me own. So you've come up with three of your favourite chocolate bars in the place of three top comedians? Yep. What are they? Uh, number three. Uh, chocolate bar called Yorkie. Number two will be Cadbury's Ripple. We're literally just listing your favourite chocolate bars now, aren't we? <laughs> and number one, it only comes out of it. Uh, only comes out on Easter. It's uh, they're called uh, Cadbury's Golden Eggs. I'm so glad we don't charge for this. <laughs> Fucking no, hell. Well. Okay, with these Cadbury's golden eggs that you get at Christmas, Easter time. Is it Easter or Christmas? Easter. Okay, so Easter time you get these, uh, you get them in a box of three. No, they come in little bags, you know, like uh, like the mini eggs. Yeah. You get them in bags as well, it's like them. Same size, uh, 
it's like caramel crunch on the outside and it's like chocolate on the inside. I bet you just fucking throw the whole lot in without even thinking, don't you? I, I put like a big massive handful, yeah. I knew it. <laughs> don't you don't get much in a bag. Right, let's before we before I lose the will to fucking live, let's go through to our interview now with Charlie Hester. Major's mess hall. This is Jim Leahy. We're talking to Major's mess hall. Randy, fuck off and give me a drink, buddy. You're listening to the Major's Mess Hall Podcast. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you, Charlie? I'm good. How are you guys tonight? I'm Excellent. doing great. So, welcome to Major's Mess Hall Podcast. Well, thank you for having me. I'm excited. Oh, uh, don't get too excited. Okay. <laughs> don't, get, don't, don't get excited at all, because it's really not that great. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so... Well, anyway, I'm Scott. I'm the one that met you at the club for Sam when you uh, yes. opened up for him. And with me and my co-host is Gavin. He's in uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia. Hi, Gavin. Hi. Like, listen, you can't just say I'm in Halifax, Nova Scotia and not finish it up with buddies from the UK because she's going to get confused with the accent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Charlie... He does that every out. time. <laughs> <laughs> so... Charlie, got to ask, you know, how'd you get into the comedy business? Oh, wow. Um, well, I was working um, on a project with Jonathan Katz from Dr. Katz Professional Therapist. Um, I He had a, a show on YouTube. It was a cartoon called Explosion Bus. And I'm a huge Jonathan Katz fan anyway. Anything he and H. John Benjamin do, I'm like, I'm there. I'm I'm in it. I'm in love with it. And so I had a spinoff of his show. I was the crazy Katz lady. And all of the other people who did spinoffs, they all did comedy. And uh, Ian Abramson and Tim Barnes especially. And they just were like, why don't, why don't you try stand-up? And I thought about it and I thought well why don't I and so I did and my first very first set was on New Year's Eve five years ago and it was terrible <laughs> I mean just, I'm so I didn't record it and thank goodness that I didn't I still have the notes and I cringe every time I look at them um yeah and so but I got a couple laughs in there as you do and that was it I was hooked and now this is all I do and Two weeks ago, you headlined your first show. I did. Well, I headlined my first comedy club for a whole weekend. So that was super fun. Um, was, yeah, I was up was, at the Drop in South Bend, Indiana. All right. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm not too far from you. I, I live in uh, St. John, Indiana, up in the north northwest corner, Indiana. Okay. Or northwest. And, okay, so you're kind uh, of up in that general area, too. I, I'm up towards Gary. Okay. And uh, I just tell people I'm from Chicago because no one knows where the hell St. John, Indiana is. Right. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, like... I live in Danville, Illinois. And so people always ask, you know, oh, is that near Chicago? No, I live in not Chicago. I'm like the rest of the state down further. So. Man, you've had some famous uh, actors, comedians come out of there. We sure have. We've had Dick Van Dyke. We've had Donald O'Connor, Jerry Van Dyke, Gene Hackman, Helen Hayes. Yeah, we've we've got a bunch. I have a lot to live up to here. You got some big shoes to fill, and you're doing it well. <laughs> oh, I'm trying. I'm trying. So, you know, I apologize for the people that are going to be listening to this show. I didn't. Make- properly introduce you because i was excited about getting you on oh uh, that's so cute no but on, a bit creepy on, actually really charlie <laughs> <laughs> i i apologize <laughs> on on the line with us right now is a uh great comedian uh her name's charlie hester and uh she travels around and she does a lot. You do a lot of charity work too. You, you know, like, like when we had the hurricane relief and all that, you, you jumped on that and rented the vehicle and got stuff, right? 
Yeah, well, we didn't end up renting a vehicle because that was just going to be stupid expensive. Um, what we did was my friend Maggie flew out from L.A. Um, this was during Hurricane Harvey, the after the few weeks following that. And we went on a uh, six-city tour, and we went to Indianapolis, uh, Louisville. Where else did we go? Um, Memphis, I think. Um we went to Columbus, Mississippi. We went to Dallas. We were just, we were all over the place. Any oh, and um, Huntsville, Alabama, and yeah, we put on a tour called Two Girls One Truck." Except we didn't have the truck because it was expensive. But we had people bring uh, pads, tampons, uh, diapers, and baby wipes, and we packed my car full. And halfway through the tour, we had to buy one of those big like zip up additional luggage bags that you get at like Walmart is where we got ours and we had it packed with pads and tampons and diapers and wipes and then we donated all of that down in Austin and then they took it from there over for their hurricane relief efforts that's awesome yeah so that was pretty fun. That was a really great tour. My friend Maggie Mayfield, she lives in L.A. and she works for um, Coast Radio. And she's just, she's a hell of a performer. And we had so much fun. So I got stuck in a shopping cart that trip. How the hell really? did you manage that? Well, Maggie was inside getting something at Walmart. <laughs> and there was a cart next to our car. And there was like nobody around. And so I got out of the car because I was bored and I was like pushing it around, like riding the shopping cart, you know, around the <laughs> the uh, parking lot. And then I decided that I was going to sit in it. And so I did. And then the cart rolled a little bit and then I couldn't get out. And so <laughs> I FaceTimed Maggie and also on Facebook. And then she had to come running out of the store and help me out of the cart. And she, yeah, she... Uh, yeah, she still laughs about that to this day. I'm I'm a big dork. That's what it is. Yeah, I am too. <laughs> <laughs> I still find myself with a heavy shopping cart jumping on that back bar and trying to ride the shopping cart like I was a little kid. Yeah, I'm going to do it until I'm 80 or until I break a hip. And even then, I'll probably still do it more because it's fun. I think that you, you should gotta, do it. You got to enjoy life. The stupid little things are the best things. Yes. Well, we did, we we threw a shopping cart down a hill, didn't we? For just for the hell of it. Yeah. You throw we... them down hills. Well, he lives. <laughs> you, you, you like the trailer park boys, don't you? Yeah. Okay. In in season two, remember Bubbles is always collecting uh, shopping carts from yeah, yeah. from down in the hill. Uh huh. Well, well, just a couple weeks ago, we were at that hill in Halifax, and uh, we chucked one down for old time's sake, and then made our other <laughs> yeah. then made our other co host go down and pick it back up. <laughs> Wait, so so you threw the shopping cart, but then you're like, but I want to be a productive member of society, so we're going to go get that cart and take it back. Is that what you're saying? No, we got it back again and then threw it again and walked away. <laughs> oh, okay, there you go. That sounds more like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, when in Halifax, do what the trailer park boys do, right? That's right. Exactly. So, so with, the, with, with the stand-up, like, do you, like, do you get nervous because, like, I love to make people laugh, but like actually getting up on stage and doing it is like so daunting to me. I I, I just know I could never do it, especially not on my own. So like, do you, like after all this time of doing stand up, do you, do you do you get nervous at all getting before you go on? Not not as much as I used to. Um, I think I've grown up my entire life performing. I've always been involved in music and theater and things like that. So stage presence was something I learned very early on. Um, I think the biggest issue for me is like if I know if it's going to be a small audience, um, then I really have to work a lot harder and I've got to pay attention to every single person in the room because, you know, each and every laugh is precious. Um, when I do bigger shows, like the bigger the crowd, the less nervous I am. So if there's 300 people in the room, I'm cool as a cucumber. It's weird. Yeah, it's, it's the same like with me. I'm a singer. Like when I used to go out and perform, if there was mm -hmm. like, you know, like 500 people, I'd be completely fine. But then if there's right. 60 people and you can literally see each individual face, it's yeah. different. It's totally, it's so much more difficult to do. Even if there was two yeah. people, like that's a nightmare to me. 
just performing yeah. to two people but when there's a massive crowd you kind of get lost in the crowd because you can't yeah. really see anything anyway and you just yeah. get on with it that's how i feel anyway yeah no and i'm the type of person who i'm far more comfortable in front of a crowd than i am like in sitting in like a parent teacher association meeting or something like that you know i'm i very much prefer to be on stage and then and go off and then I don't talk to anybody because I'm real introverted like that so yeah and I'm really digging this podcast with no video because it's allowing me to just relax and I don't have to look in your eyes and talk to you that would make me nervous yeah and also as well like we, we I mean I don't know what he looks like at the moment but last time I seen him he looked like a, a, an orthodox Jew he had this <laughs> giant long beard that needs to be trimmed up. And I'm a scruff as well. I look a mess today. So it's probably yeah. for the best anyway, to be fair. Yeah, that's cool. I have a beard too because I haven't plucked my chin in a while and I'm 40. <laughs> so it's good. It's all good. <laughs> so we had a we had Rabbit on with us a couple of weeks ago, episode 69. Oh, Eric, he, I love him. Yeah, we told him no camera, no camera. And he's like, okay. And so we call him and what's he have? He dresses up in full rabbit gear and has the camera on, and it felt weird. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then I'm, like, like seeing stuff in the background. I'm like, oh, hey, what's that? You know, and then people are wondering what the hell I'm talking about because, obviously, they can't see listening, you right. know? Yeah. Uh, so, but you, you explain it. You don't get nervous, really, in large crowds. But have you ever had, like, a show where you just have one asshole in the crowd that heckles? Yes. How do you deal with that? Um, I have a song that I specifically wrote for such occasions. Um, it's it's a song that I dedicate to, because it's always a guy. It's never a woman. It's always some asshole guy. Um, and so I dedicate the song to him, and it's called Whiskey Dick. And so <laughs> I, yeah, I basically just trash his manhood for the next, like, three and a half minutes and let all his friends laugh at him, and it shuts him right up. <laughs> I've only I've only seen one female heckler, and that was uh, at the Lafayette Theater there, uh -huh. and and uh, it was the John Dunsworth, Mr. Leahy at the time, uh -huh. and he had her, you know, he tried to like, like say funny things back to her, but then he actually told security to kick her out. It, cool. it was really it was really weird. Yeah, I mean the only time that girls ever heckle, and really it's not really heckling um is like if they're real drunk like at a bachelorette party or something then they get a little rowdy but normally i i don't have a problem with rowdy people and rowdy crowds i prefer them actually and a lot of people don't like to go on after i go because i get crowds real whipped up so yeah rowdy's my thing bring me the drunk rowdy people i like them <laughs> you know, G Gavin. Gavin hasn't had the pleasure of uh, seeing you on stage, and and I was explaining to him how you play your U Dr. Katz ukulele. No, the Dr. Katz one got stolen. What? Yeah, I was in. I was doing a show at the Laugh Factory in Chicago, and I was carrying around my uke in the case because it's a baritone uke, so it's real big. And um, I decided I was tired of carrying it, so I walked to my car, which was parked not even a block away, and put it in my car and went back into the club, hung out for a little bit, came out, and my back window had been smashed, and my ukulele was gone. And so now I have a uh, – it's from Home Movies, the – the show with H. John Benjamin and Brendan Small. Um, it has Starboy and the Captain of Outer Space on it. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, well, but that, go ahead. That, yeah, but I was telling them, like, uh, your songs, you, you play some funny songs, and I don't remember the names of the songs. You just go on and start singing them, you know, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's some funny, I, I forget, uh, you sang a, 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 a tit song that was real funny. Oh, I love my saggy boobs. Yes, that's it. <laughs> yep, yep, that's the one. That's my body acceptance song about the fact that I have saggy tits. And I'm just owning it because getting a boob job just sounds expensive. So I'm just dealing with the saggy tits I got, and they're still fun. <laughs> yeah, he he's like, what are you, what are you talking about with this, these? I was like, oh, Charlie's real cool. You know, she's laid back and, and all that, and... uh 
Yeah, she just sings some pretty funny songs, so... Aww. He also but... said something about uh, boob um, keychains or something, and then he, he couldn't remember what he was talking about. So he abandoned oh. the subject and run away. So I have no idea what he was talking about. Okay, I can fill you in, Gavin. So I like to do, I call it ridiculous merch. Because all comics sell things when they're on the road. That's a nice way to make some extra money. And everybody has t-shirts. But I like to do things that you can't get anywhere else. And so for a while, I was making saggy boob keychains. And they're handmade. And they they look like a pair of boobs that hang off your keychain. And they're like real squishy and soft, and they're super fun to play with. And uh, yeah, so are, are they I'm, are they modeled off of yours, or are they just generic no, every boobs? Pair, every pair is individual, very different. Um, nipple colors are all different. Areola colors are all different. Um, I have several different skin tones. Yeah, um, there's a mastectomy pair that has one boob that's not there, um, and there's no nipple on that one. It's yeah. I try to be real inclusive, and yeah. Okay, that makes more sense than what he was blabbering on about. <laughs> Thanks for repping my merch, Scott. Hey, you know, it's, I was trying to explain, and, and and he's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, ah, oh, forget it. <laughs> yeah, I guess unless you see it, it's it's a little bit confusing, but yeah, it's ridiculous. That's just, that's what well, I Well, he starts off and he goes, there's this song about saggy breasts, and, and then there's these boob keychain, and I'm like, what what is it with all these tits? What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Now it all makes sense. Right. Well, and here's the thing. Everybody loves tits. Men, women, even gay men. They love boobs. So, you know, it's I'm I'm hedging my, my bets is what I'm doing with the saggy boob song. I mean you even do I mean you do crazy stuff like the great girl drive. Your yeah. logo your logo is I helped a vagina in need today. Yes. Uh, the Great Girl Drive is a pet project of mine. Um I had a hysterectomy last summer. And before my hysterectomy, the weeks leading up to it, I had everybody in my town um, collect pads and tampons to donate to the women's shelter here in town. Um, I was a shelter girl. This w- It's my shelter that I went to. And um, I wanted to stock up their shelves. I just thought it would be really fun. And afterwards, it was such a success. And the shelter was very excited about getting all of these products. I decided that I could keep doing it. And so I take big baskets with me to every comedy show that I do. And people can donate pads and tampons to me. Or they can buy uh, one of my Great Girl Drive stickers, which says, yes, I I helped a vagina in need today. And then um, if once my basket gets full, then I drop it off in whatever city I happen to be in. And so, um, so far this year, we've helped the South Bend Homeless Shelter twice now, um, the Abused Women and Children's Coalition in Chicago, and the Hope House in Huntsville, Alabama. That's wow. fantastic. Yeah. Good well, it's, thank you. It's just a really nice way to give back. And quite frankly, pad and tampon, those those two words are like the dirty words of giving. Nobody ever likes to think about that. And they don't donate those products because they don't want to think about it. And I'm trying to flip the script and make people very well aware that these are items that are needed and they're needed frequently so we need to get on it and help supply some of these shelters with the items that they need yeah you know like a lot of people like you said they they just donate food and clothes they don't mm-hmm. think about the sanitary stuff and, mm-hmm. and and all that and i don't know why it's weird to say maxi pa- pads and tampons <laughs> but it's just real weird uh no but, but uh no i, I meant Great job on doing that, and uh, that's amazing. But uh, do you got any other uh, charities? I mean, anything else you're thinking about, maybe? Um, Not right now. The Great Girl Drive keeps me really, really busy. Um, Later on this year, I'll be out in L.A., and we're going to try and do several shows in a row and try and help some um, Los Angeles shelters. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's 
this is really a passion of mine. And I think it's, it's the one that just, it means the most to me. So, I mean, other than that, I try and like help out with any charity shows that people have. If they ask me to come and, you know, help with a fundraiser, I'll always, I'm always on board for that. So, but yeah, the great girl drive is just the one that I personally focus on the most. So, how long does it take you, you know, when you when you sit down and write your comedy bits out and all that? Like, how much thought do you put in to, like, one bit? Well, I guess it's a little different for me because I do musical comedy. And so, basically what I do is, on my long drive ho- drives home from comedy shows, I'll start noodling ideas for songs and then I'll record them on my phone. And then when I get home, I'll see if there's anything there. And if so, usually I know it's going to be a song that'll work because it'll only take like a day to get it completely written. Um, and then after that, I, uh, yeah, I throw in jokes where there are chord changes on the ukulele that I am not good at navigating. And so that gives me a minute to sort of get my fingers where they need to be. And that's why I tell jokes in the middle of my songs. <laughs> so, I, yeah, it's just it is just what works for me. So, yeah, that's that's kind of my process. It sounds really simplistic, but it's it's a lot. It It's a lot more than it sounds. No, your show, your show to me, I mean, obviously, I've never seen it, but it sounds so different for a female performer as well like you'll see a lot of like you know male performers getting up and playing comedy songs and stuff but i've never really seen it before from a female especially with a, a ukulele as well i mean it's it sounds like a really unique set yeah there's there's a few others of us out there but we're i always say that we're unicorns especially the females uh, musical comics in general are not there's not that many of us and so when I find a female musical comic, um, I usually try and help them however I can, you know, get connected with them. And um, because it, it works better for all of us when we're sort of, we sort of have that team mentality and we help each other out. And, you know, because there are some bookers who simply will not book musical comics and, you know, we we need to know who to avoid and who not to i don't want to say waste our time on but that's you know comedy takes a lot of work and booking is is exhausting and so any information i have that helps me use my time more wisely i want to i want to know and i want to share that information as well so why would people not want to book a, a musical comedian i don't understand that because when you when like a comedian is is fantastic, but when you add music in, you know that's so that's just an, another element that you know it's it's more of a reason to book than not book. Oh, I would agree with you, Gavin. Unfortunately, we are in the minority. <laughs> Trust me on this. I mean, it's getting better, and I think that the more recognition that that I can create for my own career, the easier it will get. But right now, I'm sort of in that middle of the road. I'm not. I'm not that well known, but I'm also not just an open micer. And so it's just, it's a lot of knocking on doors and, you know, breaking on stages and, you know, trying to make the most of every single show. Yeah. And it's good that you're staying true to yourself and you're not, you're not, you know, to get gigs where they wouldn't book someone that plays. It's good that you're not saying, you know, I'm going to put the ukulele down and I'm going to come up with another set where I don't play the music. I think that's great that you're staying true to yourself. Yeah, and I get asked that a lot. People always say, oh, it would be so interesting if you didn't do any music. Well, when I first started doing stand-up, I wasn't doing music, and it it wasn't fun for me. And so once I started doing the music, that that was when I really found my voice, and that was when I started booking a lot more shows. And so, yeah. I'm I make no bones about it. I don't work clean and I do musical comedy. And if you don't like that, then just don't book me. It's fine. So these songs that you've done, have you recorded an album with these tracks? I am in the process of doing that right now, actually. So hopefully by the end of summer, I will have everything ready to go and uh, up on iTunes and, you know, all the platforms. 
Excellent. Because, like, I know for myself, when I go and see somebody perform comedy songs, if I like the songs, I want to take them home with me. So right. that'll, that'll be fantastic. You'll like yeah. her songs. Yeah. <laughs> everybody likes the song Part Time Hooker. That's that's the one that everybody <laughs> just can't get enough of. So. I already like the title. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm trying. Did you sing that? On, on, I'm trying I to did. remember. I did sing it that night. You know, I think you sang that. You're not going to remember this. I know you're not. But I was sitting in the front row in front of the stage at Joker's. Uh huh. And. and I was texting actually Gavin, telling him about like the different acts and all that. Uh huh. And and you even stopped to say something about me being on the phone instead of paying attention to you. <laughs> well, that that's true because like you you were a dick for doing it. So it's, she had every right to say that to you. You shouldn't have been on your phone. I wasn't interested in you texting me anyway. So <laughs> there was no point to it. You you're wasting my time and Charlie's time. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, Scott, you dick. Wow, man. <laughs> and, and, and you know, ever since then, I've never pulled my phone out, really, and, and nobody's set before. Well, <laughs> see? That. That's how we grow. <laughs> and and then you sang that. I remember that that last, that second song now, Part-Time Hooker. Yeah. And you know, I wasn't even supposed to be on that show. Really? Really. I had I had had a really bad day and I put on Facebook I'm like hey guys I've today has just sucked I really need a comedy fix if anybody has a spot within a couple hours that I can just get in the car and just go to I'm there and so Neil Snyder messaged me and he's like hey come jump on the Sam the Caveman show and so I did and now look here I am talking to both of you yahoos <laughs> doing a podcast being cool Oh, you're cool without us. <laughs> oh, give me this. Yeah, this this, this pretend- won't do anything for your credibility, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> As you can tell, we're really good about our show. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, so, but we are on the Armed Forces Radio Network. Uh, so hopefully, you know, you'll pick up more, like, followers and all that. Mm. This, you know, and, and speaking of that, where can people find you on social media? Ah, yes. Um, On Facebook, it's just, I don't have a comedian page. It's just my personal page. It's just Charlie Hester. Um, On Instagram, I am Charlie Hester Comedy. And on Twitter, I am a little off color. All right. So for our prize question that we ask everybody... Okay. This, mean, this means he's run out of questions, by the way, just so you know. When he digs this one out, it means he's got nothing left. Oh, no! <laughs> this, is one, this is one time you can probably pull out your phone and look up stuff, Scott. <laughs> what is the perfect pizza to you? Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is so amazingly easy. Okay. I'm one of the weird people. I like a deep dish pizza with just a little bit of sauce, like light on the sauce. Um, Extra cheese, bacon, onion, and pineapple. Every goddamn time. Pineapple, definitely. I don't understand why that's even a question. I don't understand why it's it's this big debate. It should never be a debate. It's fine on there. Leave it on there. Get on with it. It's so good. I yeah. I, when Here's one tell, for you. Okay. At, listen to what Gavin's favorite is. Okay. <laughs> no one's heard of it. In the UK, we have chicken and sweet corn, or corn as you guys would call it, corn. Chicken and corn uh-huh. on a pizza. So good. Um, I'm going to try that because that sounds amazing. It really and works. I am not scared of new things. It really works. You know what else it works on as well? Nachos. If you make homemade nachos, throw some corn on it. If you put chicken on your nachos, chuck mm. some corn on top of it. You will just thank me later because you'll love it. That yeah, that sounds real yummy. I always throw corn in my chili, and people look at me like I've lost my damn mind. No, I'm like, that, that works. It's that works. good. It yeah. adds a little bit of bite to it. And I just reckon you can put corn sweetness. on anything. You know, I reckon you could get away with putting that on anything. Roast dinners, like whatever you wanted, it would it would work. I reckon you could throw it in a lasagna. Yeah, I honestly think it would work. 
Yeah, I we bought a popcorn machine because I run a comedy show. I do a house show here at my house. And I bought a popcorn machine. And um, after that month, I had gained like 15 pounds. And it was all from popcorn because I just, I love corn. And so, yeah, that that wasn't so good. I've had to lay off the popcorn making for a while. I love really... my, I've got a popcorn machine as well. And our other host, Craig, who's not here at the moment, he's in the UK. So it's far too late for him to be up. Um, mm-hmm. I overfilled it last time. I was, last time I was here on purpose. I just chucked a load of the, the, the kernels in there and just let it go. And I left uh-huh. the room and walked away. And when I came back, there was a mess all over the floor. And he just stood there going, I don't know what happened. <laughs> it's because I, I chucked about four times too much in the little thing. <laughs> Excellent. So much fun. Oh, my gosh. That's great. <laughs> but, uh, no, Charlie, we really appreciate you giving your time. Uh, where's the next tour at? Where's the next show? Um, The next major show that I'm doing, I'm headlining Wiley's Comedy Club in Dayton, Ohio. And that is July 6th and 7th. All right. So, yeah, that's, I mean, that's like the next big one. Uh, Ray Hensley's going to be featuring. And uh, we had so much fun headlining and featuring together at the drop that we're doing it again. So, yeah. Rochelle Renee, she said that we should get Ray on our show. He, okay, I will tell you that guy he is a professional and i adore working with him if whatever he asks me if i can do it i will i I will absolutely show up for whatever project he has in mind because he's a class act really and truly oh yeah i mean we'll we'll drop him a line see if he'd like to come on hopefully uh we weren't too bad but for me yeah oh no you guys were great i'm always i'm always up for two guys Oh. Wait, I mean, I mean, no, I totally meant that. Well, this, you're going to be on episode 74, is that right, Oh, Gav? something like that, yeah. I, 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 we're like, we've got, we just recorded another interview the other day, so that'll be that one and then this one. But I'm really yeah. looking forward to putting this one out because it's, I've had so much fun chatting to you. You, you, you honestly sound like a really nice, genuinely uh, wonderful girl, and uh, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. Oh, thanks so much. So I'm a little disappointed I wasn't episode 69, but that's fine. I'll take. And it, well, he told me about he told me about that too late. Otherwise, it, we would have planned it, but we'd already got Stelansky on that one. <sighs> Otherwise, we would have planned it. I know what a mess. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. And uh, I may pop into one of your shows and uh, come see you again. Oh, oh, don't I'm... don't threaten her like that. Come on now. No. It's, hey, as long as he keeps his phone in his pocket, I'm always happy to have him at any show. It so will be on vibrate. <laughs> yeah, Scott's a sweetie. I really enjoyed meeting him that first night. So, yeah. I, still, I still got our picture. <laughs> Do you? Will you send that to me on Facebook? I haven't seen it for a while, and I don't. Yeah, I would, I'll, I'll send yeah. it. That'd be he's great. A, he's all right in small doses. He's a good mate. He's a good friend to me, but in small doses, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just how he is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that's amazing so, so for you listeners out there if you're in the area go to charlie's uh social medias finder follower liker go to our damn show and you will not regret it yes and you can find me at charliehestercomedy.com i forgot that one that's uh, there the big you go. one that's the big one yep well, once uh once this show's edited and all that and we will uh, send it to you. We got to put like an intros and and all that, and then we'll add in Craig, and he's our third uh, host, and uh, we'll send it to you. Awesome. And uh, if you could share, you know, maybe tell people about us or whatever. Um, yeah, I'll put it. I try and put all the podcasts that I do on my website. So yeah, I'll get that added on. Absolutely. Great. We would really appreciate that. Yeah. So. All right, Charlie, again, thank you for your time. Aw, thanks for having me, guys. Sincerely, I really appreciate it. So Thanks so much. All yeah. right, have a good night. Hey, you, you do too. the same. All right, bye-bye now. All right, bye. Hey, what's up? This is Brad. This is Devin. And Rich is looking down from heaven. And we're at LFO, and you're listening to Major's Mess Hall. So there was our interview there with Charlie Hester. I want to say thanks again to Charlie for giving us your free time. It meant a lot to us. 
and we really do hope you come back on again soon and have a, another chat with us. Um, what, Scott? You breathed like you were going to speak. <laughs> no, I'm just saying I I hope everybody likes it as much as we did. Thanks, Craig. Uh, yeah, Craig, like, people people love you. Like, it's it's been established, like, you know, people sing songs about you and stuff like that. But when you literally sit there going <coughs> in the background, it's really annoying me, especially when people are trying to talk. Don't give a shit about Scott. Wow. Okay, no. <laughs> okay so uh, let's move on. Let's do our What Would You Do? So this is a segment where we take scenarios and we each ask each other what you would do in that situation. I've got a question for you. What would you do? And I think that she has one too. What would you do? I'd like to know how you'd handle this. What would you do? You must think I'm taking the piss. What would you do? So, this time, I am asking Scott. Scott is asking Craig. And Craig is asking me. So, who wants to go first? Uh, I'll go first. Shoot. You ready, Craig? Uh. All right. If you were thrown in jail for two to three years... And found that your cellmate, Adam, says to you, Hey, Craig, we can make this real easy for you. While you are here in jail, you're going to be my girlfriend. If you don't, I'm going to beat your ass every single night. Would you just say fuck it and uh, be gay for the stay if no one ever found out? <laughs> I'll get my ass beaten every night. Every night. As in just punching or with a weapon? Punching, or... kicking, getting their head hit in the bedpost, the wall. And the Basically, guards I'll, think I'll be dead in two nights, Dan. No, he, think, no, he just do it enough. Just that, yeah, he just do it enough to keep you going. <sighs> two to three years, man. Probably have to fucking take it and be gay. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that as an answer. Well, two to three years with bruises all over me and two, God, to, two to three really years with an arse like a clown's pocket. <laughs> Okay, now. I hope that was better than my last question. Craig, you ask me. Well, I couldn't. I was trying hard to think again. Fucking okay, hell, what's new? So I thought, I thought. So I was just curious the situation that I was in with that old man on the bus. Right, you're going to have to explain it. So just ask me what I would do if. Okay. What would you do if you're sitting there just. Mind your own business, listen to the music, but you're like you're not listening to music. You you know you're just picking your music, and some old guy comes to your left, slides over, and starts talking about your mother. Your mother's dead. Your mother is dead. And this this actually happened to you, didn't it? Yep. <laughs> right. Wow. And just very quickly but, explain what you did in that situation. I lost my rag with this old man and I told him to shut the fuck up and fuck off and all that. And uh, he backed off. <laughs> and he got thrown off the bus. Did he? You did or he did? He did. I don't remember. Oh yeah, he did, didn't he? Because apparently before we got on the bus he was he was harassing all the passengers. Yeah, he was. He was, uh, he was mentally unstable. Okay, so what you're asking me what I would do? Well, seeing as there was a small child right close to you, I wouldn't say to him, shut the fuck up in front of a little kid. Yeah, but the, yeah, but the mother was like, you know, she was all right with it. Yeah, you did, you did apologise to the mother, didn't you, for swearing? Yeah. So if it was me and he did that, I'd probably... Honestly, I'd probably just, like, get up and move, to be honest. Okay, now you wouldn't say anything. He's, me he's mentally unstable, mate. It's a waste of time. It's like you before with the chocolate bars. Well, You're mentally unstable, so it wasn't worth me going into it with you. So I just moved on. I let you say your top three and moved on. <clears throat> but that's probably what, what I do. What happens if he like gets up and moves with you? Uh, well, that, at, at that at that stage, I probably see. Just for future reference, you're not allowed to jump on someone else's. What would you do? I was going to jump oh. on... No, no, I'm just saying. I was going to jump on yours before and making it a little bit more difficult. But then he said that he would be gay anyway, so I, d I basically couldn't jump in. But I was going to say something else, but never mind. Um, gotcha. So, yeah, w w to answer your question, if he followed me, um, I would probably... Um, go and t I'd probably go and tell the driver and just say, listen, he's 
saying abusive stuff to me. I've just gotten up and moved, and he's doing it again. So either you say something to him or I'll have to. And the driver most likely would get, kick him off the bus. That's probably what I'd do. I wouldn't want to get into it with him because there's no point. People like that don't listen. Gotcha. So that's probably what I'd do. I think the, uh, the old man had a problem with mobile phones. Why? Because the little girl was playing on her phone. No. The mum was on her phone. And I actually remember the guy saying, you don't care about your daughter, do you? Because, you know, you're playing on your phone and all that. So why, why have a go at your mum? Why is your mum getting thrown into it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. It's freaky. It's just freaky. I was just sitting there. I wasn't listening to anything. And he's like leaning over towards me and I can, I can hear what he was saying. It's just fucking freaky. See, I was on the bus as well and I, I had my headphones on and I was listening to music because unlike Craig, I don't, I don't just sit there listening to nothing. So I had my I headphones sit, on. I was, and I, was, I was picking what to fucking pick. Okay, so anyway, so I heard, all I heard was Craig shout, shut the fuck up, and I'm, what the fuck's going on? So I didn't even hear what the fella said to him. <laughs> there, was, there was another more memorable time when, uh, where, well, there was two times actually. One was the time when we went over speed bumps and your boobs jiggled. <laughs> that was funny, because like, the way he had his arm across the back of the seat, it was like causing jiggle. And, then, and me, me and Craig made eye contact and then Craig looked down at his chest and looked back up at me and started laughing, which was just funny. And then there was another time where he fell asleep and I never told him our stop was there, so I just let him carry on. So anyway, time for mine now. Right, so I'm going to set the scene a little bit here just to add to the uh, the whole feel of it, um, just for dramatic effect. So, Scott, you are sitting on a park bench and you can hear, like, uh, the, you know, the you can hear birds chirping. And uh, you can hear the distance of like a, a kids playing in the playground, and you're just sitting there, just minding your own business, enjoying enjoying your day. And then some guy comes over to you, and he sits next to you. It's like weird-looking old guy, and he says to you, uh, "How would you like to be rich? I'm a I'm a millionaire." He looks like a tramp, but he says, "I'm a millionaire, and uh, I'm going to give you twenty million dollars." Um, but you got to do one thing, and you're like, well, "What's that?" And he says, uh, "What you got to do is um, <laughs> some uh, some guy's going to come over and now he said, look, look down there.' And he points, and this fucking big fella walking towards you with a little kid next to him, and he's coming up, he's flying over to you. He's got a little lad with him, and the guy goes, "Okay, I'm a sex pervert, and I've just been stood over there by the playground with me knob out." Uh, the little kid's just told his dad and his dad's coming over to get me and uh, we both look kind of similar because you've got a scruffy beard as well so I need you to pretend that you you just say that you did it take the blame don't let me get the blame for it and I'll give you 20 million dollars right now but you've got to take the blame for this and just admit that you had your knob out by a kid's playground what would you do? It's for 20 billion, huh? Yeah the, the guy comes out, the guy's standing there, like, oh, oh. What the fuck are you doing, you cheeky bastard? Getting your dick out in front of my kids. Just you big, know, I, big guy, he's I, pissed, man. I would just say fuck it. And say it wasn't me. Point to the other dude, man. Seriously, for 20 million? Seriously, man, because if the cops come, and then that's on your record for life, you're known as a pedophile, and you got twenty no, million. No, clear your name. No, not even for twenty million. You're going to jail. How are you going to spend twenty million? And then you got to register. Sex you won't. You won't go to all. jail because first off, you deny it. So there's not. No. You, there's no actual proof because you just don't. You just say to the police, "Oh, I was just joking. It wasn't me." No, I, I, I get out even, of it. You won't go to jail no. for that. I wouldn't even admit it, man. Seriously, for twenty million. Twenty. Seriously, man. Gone. 20 million gone. There, there's just morals, man, you know, so... Okay, so at, the, at this stage now, what's happened is the old guy says, uh, it wasn't me, it was him. And then you look at the old guy and say, what, what the fuck? And you realise the old guy had a fake beard on and he's since ripped it off. And the, and the dad goes, Right, Johnny, which one of these fellas did it? And Johnny goes, Him with the beard. And points to you. So and the, the guy looks at you then and goes, 
you fucking sick bastard. <laughs> what would you do at that point? The guy would, would kill elbow, you. I would elbow the fucking guy in the face. <laughs> right, okay, so at this stage, the guy's called for backup now, so another six of his mates are all running over, all going, you fucking baby, get here now, you fucking sicko. What would you do? Regardless, regardless, man, I, I would I would still say it ain't me, man. So Yeah, but you're getting battered now, so you wouldn't even run away. But at least I know that I'm being honest. You know what I mean? This one, I yeah, that's what I would do. And then the old the old guy with, who had the fake beard on, he he says, yeah, what it was him. I seen him and blames you anyway. So you've just been fucked over me, big time. No, you've because I take that. I would tramp. I would follow that dude home and beat his ass. You'd be you'd be dead, mate. You've just had seven dads all bat here. They were all big wrestling it's, it's, guys. It's, it's only going to it's it's, it's only going to hurt so for so long. <laughs> I no, I, I couldn't do it, man. Craig, what would you do, mate, in that situation? I fucking do what Scott did. Would you? Yeah, I don't want to be a perv and all that. For 20 million? You just say you did it. You just say, yeah, I, it was me, yeah. I, did, I, I don't know what I was thinking, I just did it. I, I, you know, I'm sorry. See, what you should have said was, this is where you two should you haven't thought, you should have looked the dad square in the face and said, yeah, it was me, but you uh, walk away from this and I'll give you 2 million. And the dad goes, yeah, okay. And you give him 2 million and... Uh, You've still got 18 million. So you're still a rich man. But it's us, so nothing ever goes our way. <laughs> no, this is this is the way. Remember, in, in these scenarios, the, we are God. So we, what we say is what's going to happen. But you don't know if that dude's really rich. He's rich, mate. Trust me, I'm God. I created this man that he's rich. The guy has got more money than he can fucking count. He's 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 a he's a he's close to a billionaire. This guy, he's got a lot of money. He could afford to give you more than twenty mil, to be fair. But that's all he's offering is twenty mil. He's not offering any more than that. He's a dirty old man, and he likes to stand around kids' playgrounds. That's what he likes to do. So you see, you you could have took the money, took the blame, and still got revenge on the old guy anyway. You could have thought, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna admit to this now and get the twenty mil, and then I'm gonna dedicate my life to taking these perverts off the streets. But instead, you just walked away and let him carry on with his knob out. Which, you know, it's just disrespectful, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Right, anyway, we uh, we need to pick a winner for our uh, Trailer Park Boys liquor competition that we've had running for a while now. It's been running and running and running, so it's time... Been going we, good. It's been, been going very good. So we have got a winner here. I have picked from a long, long list of people. Our winner is... Our winner is Graeme Stevens. Graeme, thanks so much for uh, taking part by... I mean, all you fucking did was like the page and share the post, but, well, you tagged multiple people in the post. But thank you very much, Graeme Stevens. So yeah, just uh, send us an inbox and uh, give us your address. We'll get that bottle to you with some major mess hall stickers. And uh, yeah, you'll be a very happy chappy. And to all the people that didn't win, stay tuned because we have got signed bottles of the Trailer Park Boys Old Dates Canadian Whiskey that we'll be giving away soon. So just, just stick around. We've got plenty of shit to give away. There's never just one bottle with us. And uh, I think we should do some shout-outs as well because, again... It's been going absolutely mental on uh, on Twitter. I've just literally got a massive stack of signed photos. This is I believe this is unbelievable. Signed photos of us that people have requested. There's a big string of people that I've literally had to um, write down so that I can make sure they get one of these pictures that they've asked for, which is nuts. Because why the fuck would anybody want a signed photo of us? But anyway. The people who've asked, let's just go down the list here because I don't want to miss anybody out. Um, we have got Tressy. Tressy has asked for a, a signed picture, so Tressy's going to get one. Tressy is a really nice girl that started listening when we had LFO on the podcast, when we interviewed LFO. She's a big LFO fan, so she started listening, and she's been listening ever since. So Tressy, picture's on its way to you. Uh, good old Amy Martin. She's another one who's been very supportive. Picture on her way to you. 
Uh, Michelle, Michelle's been a long time listener. She's one of the first people to buy one of our early editions of the t-shirts that we had out. So Michelle, pictures on its way to you. Uh, lovely chap called Ty. He asked for one. Ty, there's a picture on its way to you. Uh, just going down the list. Um, Myla, Myla is a Trailer Park Boys fan. She's fantastic, and uh, she also wants a photo. So one is on its way to you as well. These are all like personalised little pictures so uh, signed by all three of us with a little message for you on there so you'll like it um, Dana uh, Raging Cajun Pants she is a big fan of ours she's got a picture on, on its way as well Linda Lampo classic Linda Lampo she's asked for one it's on its way Linda stay tuned and uh, a, a lovely girl called Mandy as well who's been like really nice really chatty loves the Trailer Park Boys uh, been talking to her on and off for a while now and she also wants a picture so there's one on its way to you as well and there is more people but they're further down the list and i'm going to be honest i can't be bothered scrolling to try and find them because i'll sound like a punch drunk idiot whilst i'm trying to look uh how about uh, a shout out to, to one of our uh, new listeners baladan maria miles yeah yeah that's right yeah she's cool as well i don't know if she asked for one or not i don't remember so i'm not sure but hey, she's a one. new follower, so uh, we appreciate that. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so if she wants one, just reach out and let us know. There's also a fellow over on Instagram. I'm just going over there now. He comments on a lot of your stuff. I don't remember his name. It's, how, how bad is that? I don't even remember his name. Late Sprouting? Yeah. Spradling? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm going to assume his name's not Late, but it is on here. Late Spradling has asked for a photo and he's also a great fella and he's been chatting to us as well and commenting on our stuff and just being an all around supportive mess hall a listener. Craig, what do you think? You're gonna be on somebody's wall or bathroom somewhere. I know. Now like I say you'd want pictures of us so I don't know. Some of them are good. Some of them are like miserable. <laughs> So basically, well, we're like we're gonna throw in like uh, majors muscle stickers into the envelope as well. So you'll you'll you will get something else. So if there's one of us that you don't particularly like very much, you can put a, a majors muscle sticker over that person's face. <laughs> now I will be putting a minimum of three stickers in each envelope. So if you don't like all three of us, you can you can put a sticker over each of our faces if you want. You just take your pick. It probably probably be over mine. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I also want to, as we do every show, man, I, I want to give a shout out to uh, Mad Hatter Shows at, at mhshows.com. Uh, Neil and, and John, you guys have been terrific to us. They got some big names coming up pretty soon. I mean, Tom Arnold's coming up at their show. Uh, uh, Dustin Diamond's coming to their show. So uh, go to our website again. Tickets are cheap. I mean, for Tom Arnold, it's only 27 bucks. That, that's cheap for a big name. So check them out. One of these days I'll get to a Mad Hatter show. Oh, dude, that'll be so great, man. I meant they got a show tonight in Indianapolis with Ryan Upchurch, and they're sold out. Wow. So they're doing a really great job. Check out the website. Again, uh, we're going to put a link in our in our description uh, check out Charlie Hester, even if you go to her YouTube page and and uh, follow her on, on Twitter and Facebook or whatever and let her know you heard us, heard her here. You know, that, that just shows that we do have listeners, so. And uh, plug the t-shirts as well. And also, you can go to our website, majorsmesshall.com, and you can check out our Twitter page from there, our YouTube page from there. We started to put new videos up. Uh, you can go to our uh, Facebook page off of there. You can go to SoundCloud off of there. You can go to where Teespring's off there and uh, find many designs of our T-shirts. And uh, I think they're relatively cheap. And uh, you could buy Dick Johnson shirts there. You could buy Cove Boy 709 representation. You can buy... Uh, just our our stuff, Majors Mass Hall podcast. So, and uh, as well, I mean, it's 
it's going to be old by the time this comes out, but it's Bertie's birthday today. Bertie, a.k.a. Cove Boy, is 29 years old today. So happy birthday to the Cove Meister General. Happy uh, birthday. Yeah, Craig. Happy birthday. Yeah, there you go. There you go. You've got three happy birthdays there from all three of us. Uh, enjoy your day. But like I say, by the time you listen to this, you'll be closer to bloody 30 than you are 29. So anyway, <laughs> it's time to go. I've had enough. Thank you for listening, guys. Talk to you soon. Cheers. Yeah. Tip. Fucking hell. <laughs> Craig, he just called you the tip, mate. Did he, yeah? Yeah, he did. Ah, oh, well. What do you yeah. mean, ah, oh, well? It happens. If someone who fucking goes home and shaves his head and probably cleans himself up, then doesn't give a shit when he's in Canada. What? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell were you saying? <laughs> Shaves his head. You know, the fucking YouTube videos, like you, you shaved your head and everything. Like you, you know, you cut it short and then what it was when you're in Canada. It's like, yeah, I'll go out and make more effort. I know, I agree. You were a scruff ball when you were here, but now you've like your hair's all nice and neat now. I thought it was nice and neat there. It was so, short. The, the, it was green, mate. That's another but photo you she you, fucked. You, you, you cannot see anything green in our in my hair there. You look like the Incredible Hulk. Trampy. You wouldn't like to see me angry, Mr. Mc... Well, yeah. Okay, broccoli boy. Right, we'll... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys. Talk to you later. Bye. 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 <laughs> This is Charlie Hester I'm on this podcast With two guys And I have only met one of them But they seem really nice Even though Scott likes his phone too much (laughs) Gavin likes corn on his pizza and it's Major's Piss Hall it's your favorite podcast you should listen to every episode so just do that